Welcome to this demonstration on Bomb Connector. Before we actually start, let's take a look at the environment here. This upper blank window that we have is going to be where our bomb import area is going to happen. And then below where it says internal parts, we have all of our uh, ERP data. Within the ERP information, we'll see a lot of the important data that we want very much readily at hand. Uh, we have our IPN information, each of the internal part numbers that we have in our database, um, mu potentially multiple descriptions, you know, multiple a description for uh, ERP as well as an additional uh, We also have multiple descriptions here based on what's in the ERP system. Some might be more descriptive, some might be coming from a different place. Uh, we also have our free stock, so we can clearly see how many parts are actually in the uh, ERP system for that particular internal part, and the actual average price uh, that we would uh, see for each of those parts as well. If we actually click on a, an individual if we actually click on an individual part, you'll actually see all of the MPN data as well. Um, not just uh, a single part, but also uh, multiple parts as well. If we move over into the distributor tab as well, uh, we can look at all of the preferred and uh, configured uh, distributors that we have access to. Uh, this allows us to uh, specify which connections uh, we want to use, which portals, what uh, online logins we need uh, for each of those, um, along with email addresses so that we can connect to them and generate uh, quotation requests uh, once we determine which parts actually need to be acquired uh, from the uh, different distributors. First, I'm going to create a project, associate with a customer, now that we've created our project, we can set the state. So we can say it's in work, and then we can set a deadline as well, and uh, maybe we'll put that a couple of weeks out to complete all the tasks. And then I'm gonna import my CAD data first. I'm gonna load the CAD, I'm not gonna load the bomb, I'm just gonna use process prep as a source for the CAD data. And if we click on the PCB tab, we'll actually see our CAD file here. And this is important because if we have a look at the, the board, we can then compare it and make sure it's consistent with the bill of materials. Bill of materials might say 0805, and in the CAD we might see an 0603 LAN pattern. So that's very useful to always have the CAD data there as a, as a check against the, uh, the BOM. If we now import the BOM from file, so I'm going to pick the bomb file, open that. So once we've imported the bomb, we have our reference designator, our CPN or customer part number. Uh, that's what we'll need to match up to our internal part number. Uh, we have a description field from the bomb that we see, quantity information, some extra fields such as device types, values, and tolerances. Uh, and then we scroll to the right, uh, we also see our uh, manufacturer part number and manufacturer name. We actually define a split using the slash and then say that the MPN is the first field, manufacturer is the second. Create a flag for the consigned parts. Say that that's a consigned part. And then a flag for the uh, assembled no. This time I can say for assembled no, it's not placed. And then this will save as a template so that next time I import this bomb, the Bomb Connector will recognize this format and then apply the rules and I won't need to do them again. So let's now click OK and we'll import the bomb. And now we'll actually see the uh, bill of materials appearing in that, in that top window that was previously blank. It's also useful to be able to import the CAD. We can do that having processed the CAD file in process preparation. So we use the import from MSS and then we can pick the assembly based on the customer that we've imported. I'm just going to select the load CAD, not the load bomb, because you already have the bomb imported. 
Now we click on the PCB tab and you can see the visual of the CAD and this enables us to be able to pull specific CAD attributes such as the footprint names over uh, and use those for reference. If we want to cross probe between the two uh, we can set up, we have to go into a compact view and that's have each component on its own line and then we have a right click option show and layout and there we are we can show the layout. So now we have the bomb imported, we have our CAD available to us if needed, uh, we have the ERP system data here and so this is a completely new customer we have no IPNs linked to our CPNs so one of the first things we can do is to run our bomb check and we can decide which sort of checks we're going to perform and run that and then sort the results um, we can immediately see yeah, we've got some quantity mismatches here. You can see quantity is three, but we only have one in the reference designator column. We've got quantity of two, we only have one in there. And then here we have four, where we only have three. So immediately we can see some of these issues uh, and start to feed that back to our customer. Another good upfront check is to run the Octopart MPN search. And that will go ahead and tell us if it uh, if Octa part finds these parts or not, so if we sort based on the uh, the results there and scroll down, uh, all of these parts you can see here have, have got hits within the system. Uh, but as we go down here, we start to find some components that that we don't have uh, hits for. So potentially there's a, another issue where uh, Octa part can't understand this specific. Um, part number so maybe it may not be accurate and maybe we go back to our customer with this information too. If you have an IHS account you can also run that search from here as well. But we can run that and then get feedback on all of the parts. So we see here that we have uh, you know not found parts so if there's a problem with the MPN or the manufacturer uh, that uh, is a good way to get feedback on that and if we have a part that's not found in Octopart and not through IHS then probably there's definitely an issue with that part. Uh, there's also um, end of life flags here as well so we have a part that's end of life again that might be an issue for us that we need to follow up on. So a lot of good information here that can be uh, pulled from the IHS database. So we need to understand how to how to link those uh, components to my ERP system. And we're going to start off by doing an MPN search. And we're going to use a uh, an exact match. So we run that check. Then we go ahead and sort. And uh, let's look at the exact matches. And so any of the components we have exact match we can double click on and you'll see it will set the IPN link uh, against that CPN and immediately take us down to the next one. If we're happy with that one, we can double click on that. Uh, we can also use the auto link function and click on that. And that will then set all the other ones up as well uh, for us automatically. We can also repeat that and refresh that search, but this time do a fault tolerance search and now it doesn't have to be an exact one-to-one, -one. it could be close. Uh, so if there's some extra characters at the end of the part number, for example, we'll be able to use those. So here we have the results of, of this one. And again, we can look at the results and uh, see uh, if we're happy with those. Obviously, take a little bit more time here because uh, it's not an exact match and make sure that these are the, the same ones. So all of these fields that we see with a red S in them are smart search fields and so those can be used to also do other matching so if we don't have um, manufacturer part numbers or we want to look for alternatives the smart search is a good way to go so we can click on that smart search and it'll start running uh, checks between each of these fields that exist between the bomb and the ERP system and then again we can start to look at these searches uh, you can see all these different fields that then come back uh, that are, are rated on each of the fields that we've found. 
So if we look at here, we have a 100 nanofarad capacitor, 0603, 10%. Uh, we can match those fields against this, uh, this more de uh, descriptive description 2 that we have access to. So we have 100 nanofarad, we have 50 volt, we have 10%, we have an 0603. And that's why it's got such a high ranking uh, in the ERP system. And if we like that one, we can double click uh, and make the link. And then move on to the next one. Again, we have a 10% uh, 1 microfarad, uh, 0603, 0603, 10%, 1 microfarad, all looks good. Double, double click and make that connection as well. So we can make our way through each of the, the components here. So if we have connections that we have before, we can see those in the CIS, the com customer info set. And these are the connections that we've used from previous uh, work runs with that customer. So we can go back into here and then run that CIS search. And it will go through and uh, show me all those connections. And then I can go ahead and auto link those as well. And just use the default connections. And we'll now see a lot more connections that we've added. Obviously, typically that would be the first thing we do. Um, but if we have a lot of connections, then it makes it harder for me to show you the uh, other search capability built into POM Connector. So the next step is we move on into the calculation. So we're going to create our calculation. Uh, I'm going to set the state to be in work. Uh, we'll pick a date. Uh, let's make it about... Uh, 10 days later, and we're going to create a purchase scenario. So how, how many are we going to build? So let's say we're going to build 100. It's our purchase scenario. Yeah, you'll see our base currency is in US dollars. And if we acquire parts from other distributors, we've got all the conversion rates that are synchronized every day. And you'll see all the parts here. We have a couple of consigned parts here. So those are already going to be delivered, so they're not, uh, there's not a price needed. Uh, we have all the parts here. So we could go in and, and work on all of them, but we can also do a search and look for maybe all the Panasonic parts. So, let's so I can pick all of my Panasonic parts here, set that in the filter, and those are the ones now I'm going to check out. And then I can clear my filter and select all of the parts and you'll see now we have a mix of checked in and checked out parts. So next step I'm going to set my needed order quantity so this adds a new column uh, for the number of uh, total number of parts I need for my production based on the quantity on the board multiplied by the number of uh, boards that I'm going to produce and then we're going to take take a look at the first part number. So anything in the part number IPN field here, uh, we're obviously matching in our ERP system. So let's see here, we've got a match for this first Panasonic part, uh, no stock level. So that one's not going to work. We're going to need to acquire parts for that one. Same thing for the next one, no stock level as well. Let's take a look at the third one, and we see we have over 20,000 components in stock. Uh, we have pricing information here as well, based on the average price uh, in, in ERP. And so we've got over 20,000, we need 300, uh, we can use that one. And you can see that that pricing is applied. And this allows us to use our ERP system much more effectively. You know, no need to go out and acquire parts uh, if we've already got them in stock. Uh, so take a look at, look at the next one as well and uh, we can use that part as well. We have 23,500 on stock and we need, uh, we need 100. So we can apply and use that one as well. So we can go through one by one and, and take advantage of much of our ERP system as we can. Here I need 1,000, I've got a, nearly 12,000. Again, apply that one as well. So let's now move on and see if we can price with some online uh, connections to various distributor portals, some of these other parts. So in here you can set up which distributors you want, uh, how to contact them. Obviously, yeah, we're not doing that for real, so we have some uh, test emails in here. 
if you have uh, certain distributors that have uh, line card exclusive uh, setups, you can configure those as well. So here we have RS components that set up for Murata only. And if we can want to enable that, we can check that box. So we go into here and we click on our Disty Direct. Uh, we can set which of the uh, active distributors we want to search for and then click the search button. This is actually using your own login so you can set up the username and password so that your preferred pricing is extracted from these uh, portals. So here we have the results. Let's take a look at one of the parts. And so we see that entry in the ERP system because we have a part number, uh, but we didn't have any stock. So we found the uh, Disney Direct search for Mauser has come back and uh, shows it a good price there. Uh, and we can now use that price by clicking on it. And now that entry will appear in here as well. We can now use our best price adjustment. And uh, we have many rules in here that we can apply that you can customize how the best price algorithm works. Um, and you can decide which of these you want to include or exclude, uh, how you want to customize uh, the lead time, for example. If you want a lead time no more than uh, 10 days, you can put that in here as well. How you want to handle surplus. Uh, all these areas can be customized uh, in terms of how the best price algorithm works and then be able to apply that onto the data. So I'll apply those prices and now we can actually see a lot of the material cost based on, on these particular parts. So now maybe we need to request specific parts. Uh, we can create a distributor request. So we can decide which uh, distributors to uh, send our message to. Maybe RS and Arrow. And we're going to request only the parts without prices, which looks like we only have the one left. Uh, let's include the description. And instead of actually sending the email, I'm just going to click display email. There's the first email, the second email. And if we double click, you actually see the instructions and then the requested part. So there's the single part there as well. And then finally, we can create a full calculation report. And this will be our final quote with all the entries, all the part numbers and the pricing. That launches into Excel. So there's the overview, the material cost of production. And then we can see all of the individual parts with the pricing. This concludes the Vala Bomb Connector demonstration.